You are listening to Rootbound, a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. Here, take this clover for luck. Ha ha, gotcha, that's not a clover at all. It's this week's Rootbound sponsor, Wood Sorrel. Wood Sorrel, it's not a clover, but it is quite tart. Hi, thanks for listening to this episode of Rootbound. I'm the host of the show, and my name is Steve. Rootbound is the podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. And each week, I invite a guest who joins me on the show to share with us all about a plant that means something to them. And then I share with a guest about a plant that means something to me. And through this process, we can all learn more about plants and learn more about each other. However, regular listeners of the program will know that that dinging sound means that this is going to be a special episode and we're only going to talk about one plant and that's because our guest today chose a plant that is on my secret list of plants and that means that we're only going to talk about that plant today. Now this is one of those plants that I actually didn't realize should have been on my secret list of plants until the guest mentioned it but I was like oh yeah that plant is meaningful to me let's just talk about just that plant today. So that's what we're going to do but first since our guest is a musician I thought it would be fun, and this is not plant-related, but I thought it would be fun to pretend to be a DJ before I meet our guest. So here we go. This is the song that first introduced me to our guest. It's a song from 2015, and it's called Break. Let's give it a listen. Party Nails, thank you for joining me on this episode of Rootbound. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk about plants. Well, do you have a plant to share with us today? I do. My plant today is the nasturtium, okay, which I, I love to say. It is a great word to say. And I have to do something a little bit weird right now. I have to play okay. this little sound effect. Because that means <laughs> that this is a special episode where we're only going to talk about one plant. Because you have chosen a plant that is on my secret list of plants. And that means... We will both talk about nasturtium. So you'll share I'm your fun so facts. Excited. And then I'll join in and share my I'm, fun facts. What's this special list like? I'm sure you won't share other ones on the list, but what does it mean? Just that you lo- are more excited about it's them? It's just that a plant that I know I have some connection with already. And it's getting shorter, that secret list of plants. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, I didn't actually realize that nasturtium was on it until you said it. And I was like, oh, actually, I do have a connection with that plant. So yeah. um, it's really like the ones that I know that I can kind of like tell my like why it's meaningful to me like without thinking about it too much and, yeah and so it's it's getting shorter these days because a lot of them have been chosen but uh oh, yeah nasturtium cool. is, is on it so yeah so I'll, we'll let you start like, why did you choose it why is nasturtium meaningful to you um for so for a few reasons they are so playful and fun they just show up i mean i live in southern california and this year especially i feel like i you know i walk my dog a lot just particularly this season i've just noticed so many nasturtiums everywhere and i love their smell when there's a lot of them Mm. and kind of walking through this they don't smell at all like they would taste but maybe a little they almost smell like a bell pepper but kind of Mm. sweeter like Mm -hmm. syrupier um and they're like neon at least the ones that are growing in my neighborhood and 
um, when I was young, I used to, that's my dog's <laughs> collar. <laughs> when I was young and I was just starting to like babysit a lot in my t- hometown, I had the, these two sisters um, and they we would play outside all the time because we lived in a small town in upstate New York. So outside all the time. And one of the sisters, the younger one, just loved nasturtiums. And whenever she saw them, she would just like eat them all up. <laughs> and it was really funny. <laughs> and I always was impressed because they're spicy. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that's gold for a child. Yeah, like a three or a wow. four year old. Yeah, she thought they were so good. So, and I mean, when I did a little bit of research, just knowing that I was going to talk to you today, I didn't actually know that they fight pests in yeah. the garden. I had no idea, which I think is cool. That is super cool. I only got into a little bit of that in my research, but yeah, that is super interesting. Yeah. Now, do you, do you like to eat them? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. Well... I try not to eat all of them because they're not mine and because somebody might have peed on them because I walk my dog a lot. So I think about that a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of just free peeing, you know, happening in my life. So I figure who knows who's been here. Um, But, you know, like now and then I'll grab one or two and just on a walk with myself, just kind of be like, wow, that was it's just nuts to eat a flower. Yeah. On, yeah. on a walk. Yeah. On a walk and like ever, but especially just like on a walk. But you know, if you get a salad and there's nasturtiums on it, you're kind of blown away and it feels wrong to eat a flower, but it also <laughs> feels <laughs> really like it's like, I don't know. It's like you bottled baby's laughter and like, like sprayed it on somebody like it's that same thing you're like this can't be real we can't eat this flower that's too amazing or something that's kind of the feeling i get yeah so, yeah um what about yeah. the leaves do you ever eat the leaves i actually didn't know until this episode that you can interesting that is yeah i i well i guess i know the flowers are edible and they're most common but i actually prefer the leaves i think they're more a more interesting thing actually oh yeah. like how do you eat the leaves uh, like, just what, like what do you salad do? honestly like you can just use them in a salad they add a nice like spicy tang to a salad mm. also good super good replacing lettuce on a burger actually uh, Whoa. because you get that bite from the nasturtium yeah that but sounds I amazing i haven't done that much with them in fact you reminding me about them made me think why haven't I been growing them because I do have quite an if people who listen to the show know I have quite an extensive garden with a lot of stuff but I haven't grown them for years in fact I haven't grown them in this garden the last time I grew them I was in a tiny apartment oh. and that's kind of actually why they're meaningful to me which I can maybe transition to before mm-hmm. maybe talk about more fun facts here mm-hmm. um, so when I uh, when my wife and I moved back w- uh, we lived in Switzerland for a while we moved to Pittsburgh and, cool. and that's when I first was like starting to realize, oh, you can like have a garden. Like I never lived in an, a, ho- a house before. And this we had moved into a house and there was a little backyard. Yeah. And so I had this garden. I was growing stuff. And that was like really cool. But not too long later, we moved to D.C., uh, which is where I live now. And we were in an apartment. And I had just gotten that like taste for gardening. But now we lived in this like high rise apartment. And I was like, mm-hmm. what am I going to do? How can I do this? So I, 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 uh, conceived of this interesting apparatus where I got, I got, uh, we had floor to ceiling windows in the apartment and I got Very these cool. uh, shower rods and I wedged them in the window sh- uh, sill to make like vertical columns. Very cool. And then I got, um, wire, uh, shower racks and I hung them from the, that. So I had these little shelves right up against the window Wow! and it wasn't too deep. I wanted to be able to still be able to close the blinds. So it was like pretty shallow so my pots that I could fit in there were really tiny. And basically <laughs> the only thing I ended up being able to grow was basil and nasturtiums. That sounds like my perfect <laughs> thing. I love basil too. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was cool. The nasturtiums were cool because I could plant them on the side and they would crawl up the the little post. Because if if people don't know about nasturtiums, which we should talk into a little about their characteristics, but one of their characteristics is they're a, a vining, you know, mm. uh, trailing uh, plant, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I actually didn't know that they were. I think I thought they were more like, um, because of their color, I think early on I filed them away as part of like the magnolia slash calendula family because they're also yellow and orange. Uh And 
when I've always seen nasturtiums, they've been low to the ground. Right. They will like ground cover too, right? Yeah. yeah. And I and in my research, and maybe this is not correct, they're different types actually. Like you buy the different type. So there's climbing ones and there's like shrub uh, version. That makes sense. Which, yeah. Okay. Is, well, I didn't, I, I didn't get in that specifically. Like lots of lots of those, you know, the things we grow in gardens have different cultivars that exhibit different characteristics, and so I wouldn't uh, be surprised. I'm, I'm sure there okay. are. Um, there's actually I know there's a million cultivars. Is that word right? Of of like a uh, specifically uh, selected version of a plant. Um, okay. And so yeah, I, I'm, I'm so sure like a true. plant could be just a nasturtium. And you could kind of plant it and see what happens. Or you could specifically be like, I want the climbing nasturtium and this seed will definitely do that. Yeah. And it even gets more specific like that because, you know, the people who like breed plants like will will like select various plants for specific characteristics like the color of the flower or the way that they trail or the way they climb. And then they, they market those under pretty... Uh, fantastic names often. I don't know any of the nasturtium ones off the top of my head, but there are some pretty fun names that people call. Um, I think there's a, I, I mentioned in another episode, there's a hosta that's called Captain Kirk hosta, right? Like, <laughs> like basically you can name them whatever you want if you like do that. So there's right, lots of right. funny names. And I'm sure if you go down, hey, there's probably hundreds of nasturtium. Like cultivars. Dragon's Breath or so, something. That's a great name. If yeah. that's not a nasturtium, <laughs> you should uh, raise your own cultivar and name it I that. I should. Yeah. Well, actually, one of the reasons that I'm glad to be getting back into them is because I'm trying to basically create privacy because I live in the middle of LA and I live on a busy street and I like it. I like living in a city, but we, I also have a front porch or we have a front porch. So I put up a little bit of like privacy something. Um, I don't, don't know what to call them, but I'm hanging some things that kind of cut the vision mm-hmm. a little bit. And then when I saw that these climb, I was like, oh, I maybe have to plant some nasturtiums or just have a couple little pots down below or maybe even plant them underneath my house. So we'll see. Like underneath that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then they can climb up and kind of create more privacy. Yeah, that would be cool. And, you know, my all my gardening. I lived in California for a long time, too, by the way. I lived in San Diego and uh, Ventura. Oh, cool. My sister lived in L.A. I've been in that area a lot. But I didn't. I was not into plants at all when I lived in California. And so now I know about gardening but i really know about east coast gardening it's a whole different thing in california wow like plants right it's like it's funny because i'm from the east coast and i don't know as much about the east coast <laughs> yeah gardening <laughs> i guess it's you know I, I i this comes up over and over on the show but it's like so good to bring up because it's so applicable but i had a, a friend say in the uh podcast a while back he said that botany comes with age <laughs> so like, as the older you get the more interested in plants you get and yeah so like when we're kids we like kind of ignore plants but then like yeah, yeah now I'm like so into them you know that's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the reasons that I know what nasturtiums are is because of this child oh, yeah. whose mother um, was friends with my mother and the two of them were really into plants and got me into plants. I wasn't growing plants and things, but they were really into like herbalism mm-hmm. and sort of alternative medicines and stuff, which is, you know, I'm, I'm not not into it, yeah. but I'm, I'm not as intense as, you know, they came of age in the seventies. It was kind of like a renaissance of like witchy stuff yeah um so knowing what you know like we had echinacea for every cold like a homemade tincture for every cold that we ever had so the idea that like you i i always am walking around and trying to identify what i see and to a lay person i know a lot but to a plant person I can just barely, I can have a conversation, yeah. if that makes sense. I'm, I'm like, with you there, for sure. I'm the yeah. same. <laughs> I mean, part of this reason I have this podcast is to force myself to learn more about plants. And so I feel like, you know, I've done like 80 something episodes now. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I've, you know, <laughs> I've done it for about two years. So I'm like in my, my junior year of like plant yeah. knowledge or something. But, uh, that's really sweet. But, uh, yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> Let's talk about some fun facts and dozen details about nasturtium. What what do you what do you got? Do you have anything uh, that that stood out to you? Mm-hmm. You can pickle the seed pods. Oh, I was reading about that. Like, uh, yes, like you can treat them like a caper, right? Yeah, which seems like what a yeah. It just can do a lot of things. There's a lot to this plant, and if you don't want to eat it, 
it looks super duper cool. So, so far we have, you can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, you can pickle the seed pods. So that's three things, like everything about it you can eat so yeah. far, almost. I, yeah, I think, I think I read somewhere that maybe the seeds themselves, you may not want to eat a lot of those. But, okay. But oh, like do you have to take the pods out? No, like I think you're them? when you're. I think maybe seed pod is the. I think it's the young, the young uh, bud. I think is what you that, Got or maybe it. the young seeds. But I think if it's like a hard seed, but you probably don't want to eat that anyway. But maybe not. I don't know. Right. I read another blog of this thing that, and maybe I'll get into it a little bit about like some of the like chemical compounds that like make it taste oh. what it is. And and but anyway. Um, oh no, I'm curious about that. But if you want to wait, we can wait. I, I have, yeah, sure. I have a little bit of a flow that I think I don't want to okay. sidetrack us on. Yeah, cool. In, anything okay. else in your, uh, in your more list fun of facts? Or, yeah. Um, they get along well with uh, lots of other um, like edible plants. So the ones that they get along with well, that at least that my research uncovered, were beans, broccoli cabbage and broccoli and cabbage are related to each other uh cucumber kale melon and pumpkin and melon and pumpkin are related to each other and radish which i think might even be in a similar family to mustard so that yes. and uh nasturtiums are similar to mustard tasting but i don't know if they're actually similar uh, they, they are so that gets into one of my fun facts i i always really like getting into like the nomenclature a bit you know yeah and that's uh, awesome. they are i'm not audience if i'm wrong about this i'm sorry because i don't have this particular in my notes but i believe nasturtiums are in the family maybe it's the family of the order i'm gonna google this real quick so the audience yeah doesn't, it doesn't hurt me i think they're in the family <laughs> brassicales um which is the same family as all of the the like broccoli, broccoli and, and stuff, all the brassicas. Cabbage. Right, right. Oh, right. No, sorry. They're in the order brassicales. Brassicales. Is the, and then and they are in the family tropeolaceae, whereas the broccoli and kale and stuff are in the family brassica. Oh, right. Kale's in there, too. Right. I forgot about Actually, kale. That's, I haven't talked about that for a while, but kale, broccoli, cauliflower, a whole bunch of them, they're all the same species. They're what? just different cultivars of the same species, what? which is a pretty mind blowing thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just crossed my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wait, that seems wrong. I, it, Are we allowed to do that? Yeah, we've been, I mean, we've done it for for <laughs> for centuries and centuries. Um, wow. Which, which one is that? I mean, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I I, I love this fact. So um, yeah, I think like we're you know we're talking about edible stuff and yeah. What it gets along with, what nasturtium gets along with. Yeah, so Brassica oleraceae is wild cabbage, but it has been cultivated into, and this is a short list from Wikipedia, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, Savoy cabbage, kohlrabi, and guy lan are all the same species. They have wow. just been cultivated. And the example I like to use for this often is, you know, you have a dog there. Uh, I was just going right? to say. And we think about that all the time. Like, there's a lot of dogs that look a lot, they look real different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they're all dogs. Yeah. And they all came from a wolf. Yeah. Which is pretty, yeah, mine looks like a little black and white pig right now. So. <laughs> and so you compare it to like a mastiff and you're like, <laughs> these are the same creature, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really, really good um, comparison to make. And like, you know, I get, I get. I guess I understood that they were in the same family, but that's an incredible what's able to happen with the yeah, cultivars. They're which I in didn't. the same species. They're literally the same species, right? Which is they're literally the same species. Yeah. There's some wow. other things in the same genus, which I've, I, you know, that get a little bit different. Um, but and and so nasturtiums in the order order. So that's two levels up, right? I, uh, okay. So it's like ge so species, genus, family, order. Okay. And then, I forget the other ones. Uh, kingdom is the plant kingdom, phylum, order, oh. family, genus, species. Yes, there we go. Wow, yeah. nice. <laughs> anyway. I don't remember bio very well. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been forcing myself to relearn some of that stuff. Um, That's extremely cool. So um, other things about the the nomenclature. Okay, so they're in the order uh, brassicales, which I'll talk about in a, again a little bit when we talk about some of those chemical things. So there's... When, when I'm like researching a plant, most of the time I find really fun details, but sometimes I find something where I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. And I have one <laughs> of those for you in a little bit. Um, oh, I'm excited. But uh, the let's talk just quickly 
uh, about the genus and species of the plant. Uh, and okay. so it is scientific name is Tropaeolum magus or magus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is pretty interesting, but yeah, let's, let's break that down. Okay. Um, so like big something you're right. The magus means big. And I guess it was, I guess when they named it, it was the bigger of the ones that they chose, I guess. I don't know for cool. that for sure, but yeah. the tropeolum is a weird one. And this, this is something that happens a lot. This is like a theme with plants. And I, I feel like it's a, it's a, like always a bit of interesting, just like history of, of the world and culture of how this happened. Cause we have all these scientific names for things, but often the scientific name is pretty arbitrary. And so much of it comes down to the fact that this guy, Carl Linnaeus who invented binomial nomenclature was the guy who got to name everything. So he just, Oh wow. He just, you know, many episodes of the show, this is not one of these examples, but so many plant plants, they're just named after some guy he knew. And he said, I'm going to name this plant after him. And this one's going to be named after him. I think dinosaurs are kind of like that totally, too. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's like some, <laughs> some dude, you know, and sometimes it's like a guy who like was responsible for like, you know, finding it or like cultivating it. And sometimes in this case, it's just like literally his buddy. And he's like, <laughs> I name it oh after you. Thank God. I mean, it's kind of sweet. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It is. I guess it. Like, he really that. likes his yeah. friends. But a uh, tropeolum comes from a Greek word or, yeah, a Greek word or, a, yeah, I think it was a Greek word, tropeon. Okay. And this is also where we get the word trophy from. Ooh. And the original trophy was a, 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 a pole that they would hang the, the armor of the conquered soldiers onto. Wow. And so he thought that a... Um, Nasturtium going up a pole looked like shields and bloody helmets hanging. Yeah, from the pole, so. that's so cool, yeah, so, and I don't disagree. I mean, it's way prettier, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> the leaves are kind of in the shape of a shield. Like I remember yeah. one place described them in that way, and I never thought of them in that way. I just thought like they're roundish. Yeah, they, I think of them in my ty- in my version of species and stuff in my head i call those dinosaur style leaves they remind me of leaves that you would see like when in like recreations of like this is what it looked like when there were dinosaurs just these sort of like rounder kind of like almost like like if flubber was a leaf kind of a shape (laughs) um (laughs) they're just so like like j- like funny almost looking mm-hmm. or like that they're happy or they're trying to make you happy. They have this like joyous quality to them, but they also do look like a shield. And I can totally see how the, especially like the darker orange. And I think they do come in red. Too, yeah. Yeah. Looks bloody. That's pretty awesome. So that's, that's where he got the name from uh, on the, on the head part. Interestingly, and this I'm, I'm really into the name stuff. Sometimes I think I go too deep on the names. No, I like that. But, I think um, it's cool. In Spanish, apparently, in some places, they are called cappuccina. Oh, like a cappuccino? Well, cappuccino comes from <laughs> the capuchin monks of Italy. And so the oh. cappuccina is because the flower kind of looks like a monk's, like, because it has that little spike at the back, you know? Um, uh-huh. For the audience who doesn't know, like, it's got the flower, but it has this kind of strange little, like, spur coming off the back. And they think yeah. that kind of looks like a monk's hood with, like, the little, like, pointy thing, you know? Oh, so my So they gosh. call them cappuccino. That's so cute. Yeah. yeah, like if you pluck one off, if you pluck a blossom, it has this very like mm-hmm. kind of a shape. It's just, it got this curve to it like you're describing. Yeah. And it, yeah. it, it's apparently that thing on the back, this is the botanical thing, is a modified sepal. One of the sepals makes that shape, which is an interesting. What's a sepal? So the sepal is, um, I think the most when I learn sepal, I think I think I I like force myself to learn every now and then on the beginning of the show. I like do vocabulary and I force myself to like like what is that word? And yeah, a while back great. I did that. And the the when I learned that the easiest is if you think about a dandelion, the mm-hmm. yellow bits are the petals, but then there's those green bits that close around the dandelion. Those little green yeah. they look like green petals. Yeah, those are sepals. Okay. And most flowers have some kind of sepal structure that often are responsible for closing the flower, but sometimes they do other things. Like in nasturtium, for some reason, it has this weird little point, which I should have figured out maybe why that is. I didn't Google that. That's so <laughs> but, interesting. Yeah. I kind of want to Google just a photo of like the back of the back of a nasturtium. Yeah, back of a 
I'll never be able to spell it <laughs> the proper way the first time. That's right. Google will get your back there. Yeah. Like, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. You see that little, like, it like, really does go, like, much further than another plant. Yeah. And it's it's kind of funny because you see the other sepals that still kind of wrap around the base of the flower. But mm-hmm. one of the sepals decides to like hang back and curl EQ back like that for some reason. That's so interesting. Yeah. Is a sepal like like a strawberry? Like that's a fruit after a flower and the, the green on the Those top of a might strawberry. Those sepals. <sighs> some of that, but the, that botany stuff it, gets really complicated. It gets vague. Because like, like a fruit. strawberry is also weird. It's, it's like some kind of weird compound fruit. Like it's also kind of a weird fruit. Oh. Um, so yeah, I have, yeah, strawberries are, I, I can't like, think have of you done an episode on strawberries? Yet? I haven't surprisingly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Like I didn't realize they were so like, they were kind of a black sheep in the fruit family. There, you know, there's some, f- there's like all these definitions of fruit, like a berry, which are botanically a berry. What are botanically a, uh, a poem, which is like an apple or uh, mm. citrus. I forget the word for those. Anyway, Strawberry is its own kind of weird. Well, there's probably some other ones like it, but it's it's like it's not technically a berry, um, okay. right? It's some other thing, right? Yeah, and they're related actually to. I think no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> I was gonna say apples and roses are related, but yes, and I, I, oh, strawberry could be in. Well, we're we're. we're <laughs> I know. Sorry, it's sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm like the queen of tangents. I love. Apparently. I do love tangents. I do love tangents. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna. I'm still on Wikipedia, so I'll just see. Oh yeah, so they are in the family Rosaceae. So they're in the same family as roses too. Strawberries yeah. are. They're oh. just a different genus, whereas some of that's those are closer cool. related genuses than you would think. So, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I hope. Uh, yeah. Um, I I don't want to interrupt if you have other fun facts. I can really keep going here. But what what else do you got on your list over there? Um, I have two more cool facts. Awesome. Um, one cool fact is that they are. I think they're technically annuals, but they can become perennials oh. if it doesn't frost, which I didn't realize. Like, was just kind of that seems so chill of them, you know, <laughs> to just be like, "Oh, we're good, <laughs> we'll stay." Um, that's really cool to me, and I think, like, at least where I live right now, they seem like they just stay. Yeah, like you know, like it doesn't seem like they're being really um landscaped or anything like there's a whole big group of them on along this hiking trail that i go on with my dog um and in my research it said that they needed like six plus hours of direct sunlight to bloom well and these ones were growing in the woods they were Mm. totally happy so they didn't they weren't getting any direct sunlight and there was tons of blooms um so they seem like a really like resilient um and just almost like a weed, you know, mm-hmm. they're just kind of like, we got, we got to do this. <laughs> we got to survive. Um, but they're cute. So that's different than a weed. Well, some weeds are great. Um, well, there's a whole thing weed. with weeds in this podcast. You know, I don't, I don't know oh. if I believe in the word weed, maybe. But anyway, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. I, I can't wait to listen to your other episodes. So my last fun fact is that they attract pollinators. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. That. Yeah, that's a good thing. And I didn't know that. Um, so basically, they're really good to have in any type of garden. Yeah. Just because they're nice and they attract pests and they it's good to put them next to important foods like tomatoes and stuff because they'll attract all the aphids. Oh, yeah. There's that um, like a trap plant. You could use them. Oh, yes. Hi, that's the word. Yeah, this is Snoot here. You can kind of <laughs> he's he's expecting to go. On his evening WALK very soon. To go soon. peruse the nasturtiums. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Possibly pee on them. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so I've got I've got some more fun facts and dazzling okay, details I, here. I'm exciting. Um, okay. I'm excited. Let's talk about the name nasturtium. What is up with that, right? Why is it nasturtium? Really good question. I never even thought of that. So nasturtium is apparently, I think it's based off of Greek. Don't quote me on that audience. But it essentially means nose twister. <laughs> which i guess is, is a reference to its spiciness mm-hmm, or like mm-hmm. you know or it has a, sometimes you can have a little bit of like a wasabi like quality that gets in your nose yes and i think that's how I we love call it. it now i didn't know this interestingly just... there is a genus of plants called nasturtium 
Oh. But nasturtium is not in the genus nasturtium. The nasturtium is in the genus tropeolum. What? The genus nasturtium is the same genus as watercress. Okay, I knew that. I just couldn't remember the name watercress because I can't. Yeah. I don't know. I just can't remember that one. So I, yeah, so watercress is nasturtium something in the species. But I th- nasturtium, wow. the one we're talking about, the one I think most people, at least, at least in this part of the world, think of as nasturtium, it's called that because when Europeans came to South America, it's a South American plant originally. It's from like Peru and Argentina. Oh. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of native range. Um, someone brought it back. This guy, Monardis, brought it back to Spain. And I guess they thought it tasted like watercress. And so they started calling it nasturtium, right? So it's just got, got this it. name that's right. like a loaned from another plant already, which happened a lot, right? Like Europeans cool. were like, that reminds me of that thing. I'm going to just call it that thing. You For know? sure. Yeah. And then like centuries later, we're like, why is this? this that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But the one thing I was trying to get to, I'm always trying to think like, sometimes I'm like, it's a little bit of a bummer that we don't have like the native words for things. Uh, so mm-hmm. I was trying to say is like, is there a native word? for nasturtium and i couldn't find one for the tropeolum magus but mm-hmm. there's another there's a number of uh nasturtiums in the genus tropeolum the most common one i think the one we mostly see is the magus but there's one that's i guess pretty common in in lots of parts of um of peru and uh and in argentina that's called tropeolum tuberosum and that means the tuberous nasturtium wow and it has tubers wow that you can eat they're like little miniature potatoes. That's insane. Yeah. And and that has a word. Uh, is they're most commonly called mashua, mashua, it, or in some parts of Peru, apparently anyu, or sometimes mashua. There was a number of actually native names for this food. That's cool. And I thought that was super cool. That there's like are a, they like really little? No, or? they're more like like egg sized. I think cool. Yeah. Like like a like a small red potato yeah, or something yeah. like that. Oh my god! So I, I want to try to find some of those, um, or like I don't know if can you if maybe you can you grow those too? Like you can grow nasturtiums, or do they really need the the climate of where they're from more? I mean, interestingly, totally. that you say that um, nasturtiums grow so well in L.A. When you like look at a map, like if you just you know put the mirror of where the equator is, the place where nasturtiums grow are native from is kind of like the flip image. So like the the <laughs> the, the right. climates are pretty similar between the west coast of California and the west coast of South America, right? They Got have similar it. climates. So it doesn't it makes sense that they grow pretty well, but they still yeah. grow well in upstate New York apparently too. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Probably not I didn't as well. Ever but. see them? Yeah, I never saw them like this wild like they were all, they seemed like somebody planted them like in their front yard yeah, kind of a true. thing. Maybe, but then again, like I don't know. I, I I know that they they like they don't mind bad soil, mm-hmm. um, and they don't like too much good soil. Actually, they prefer to kind of be in a less than ideal um, soil, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting. So that's definitely California. You know, like we're more of a or Southern California. Yeah. We're definitely dry, more of like a succulent type mm-hmm. place. Um, and there's a lot of eucalyptus around mm-hmm. here. Um, yeah so it does it seems to be very very happy just kind of making itself known i don't know if a tuber i don't know anything about tuber growing tubers i think i just think they're magic a little bit they're they're cool i have one of my favorite tuber plants is the the sun choke i grow a bunch of those um here what's a sun Uh, let me just sometimes called the jerusalem artichoke you might have heard them called that it's in the sunflower family super tasty um they're they're Aww. they're they're fun. You can find them often. Uh, like I bet you, if you go to Erewhon out there in, in uh, LA, you could find some sun chokes. I'm sure. I'm seeing like the their roots. Yeah. Dr- oh, okay. So tuber so. is is a, a is well, it's a it's a underground structure that stores energy. So potatoes are tubers. Um, Got it. Sweet potatoes right. are tubers, um, and they are like just a starchy thing, right? So they're good to eat when they're when they're edible. Some not all tubers are edible, but. Uh, Mashua, so Tropeolum tuberosum, is apparently pretty common in a lot of like uh, diets in in South America, and is like a traditional food. However, th- there's a line on a line on um, Wikipedia that I was like too weird not to to read, <laughs> and so I'm going to read it in t- entirety. It says popularization of Mashua may be limited by its strong flavor and its reputation as an an aphrodisiac. 
Father Bernabe Cobo records that in the 16th century, the Inca used to give the enormous amounts of mashua to their troops so that they would forget their wives. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how true that is, but I guess so funny. A, a plant that is is um, re- has a reputation as being an anaphrodisiac, the opposite of an aphrodisiac, is maybe why <laughs> we don't know about it very much. So yeah, that was um, interesting. Yeah, people don't like those. Yeah, And they look like, I'm looking at a photo of them now. They look like really short, stout, like carrots, like yeah. heirloom carrots yeah, or something. Yeah, because they're very colorful and stuff, right? And different colors. Yeah. 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 And, and the Jerusalem artichoke that you were mentioning, the. Yeah. You're, that's what you're growing. I grow a lot so of you're. Those, yeah. Okay. I see. So you're kind of thinking of like, maybe I'm, maybe you're learning what you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that'd be a nice, fun project for a, a second tuber. Yeah. Um, I want, I just wonder, like, you know, they're very different environments where i live and like there probably would have to be an annual like i bet i couldn't keep them as a perennial here in this climate but i should i should give it a try um yeah okay let's get into the the super super fascinating fact i found and it's related to potentially the like uh the strong flavor that they mention of the mashua but also that flavor of you know the strong flavor of the nasturtium because basically how i got to this fact i was like why are nasturtiums spicy, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I was trying to figure that out, and they're not spicy the same way that like a chili pepper is. That's from a chemical called capsaicin. They don't have that at all. And so then I was reading about um, what what they do have, and there was one blog that was saying that, hey, they have these things called glucosinolates, and if you eat too much of them, they can be like toxic. And I was reading this blog that was kind of saying maybe people, people shouldn't eat too many nasturtiums, which I don't know. I... I feel like people are being too yeah, cautious. People me. sometimes be yeah. that too cautious. But, I mean, you shouldn't eat too much of anything, right? Like, of course. Yeah. Um, don't go on an nasturtium diet. Yeah. Just don't do that. Yeah. But, but and there, there's something we say on the podcast all the time, too, which is the quote from the famous Swiss alchemist Paracelsus, which is, uh, the dose makes the poison, right? Something is not poisonous mm. unless you have too much of it. And sometimes too much is very small. Sometimes too much is a lot. But anything yeah. is poisonous in the right dose. Um, mm mm-hmm. But they have this chemical compound called glucosinolate. Okay. And then they mentioned that these glucosinolates become another chemical called an isothiocyanate. And that is the compound that makes it taste spicy. It's oh. isothiocyanates. And then I read that all plants in the uh, Brassicales order create these glucosinolates and the isothiocyanates. But then I was like, okay, well, how does the isothionate, how does the glucosinolate become the isothiocyanate? And that's because there's a, there is an enzyme that is called myrosinase. And this is where it gets super interesting because when I started reading about this, that basically this myrosinase interacts with the glucosinolate and becomes isothiocyanate, which gives you the flavor. Wow. But that is related to uh, a, a, there is a phenomenon that is apparently known in botany as the mustard oil bomb. <laughs> and this is where I was like, Like what? B-A-L-M or no, B-O-M-B? B-O-M-B, bomb. Okay, mustard oil bomb. Yes. That sounds like a band yeah, that should we should be. probably start. Yeah, yeah, yeah sounds great. <laughs> we are mustard oil bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so all, the flavor of all of the brassicas that have like the distinct flavor also uh, mm-hmm. in um, horseradish, all these there's a lot of things that are related. Mm-hmm. Some are stronger than yeah. others. Like broccoli doesn't yeah. have as much of it, but it has some of it. We've we've kind of totally. bred out some of it. Nasturtium has it really really strong. All that comes from this chemical process of glucosinolates becoming isothiocyanates in the presence wow. of myrosinase. Wow! But what happens is in the plant, the myrosinase and the glucosinolates are in different places. Mm -hmm. And when somebody eats the leaf, it breaks the cells and they merge together and the spiciness comes out. That is, it's like, it's like a la carte spice. Yeah. And that's why it's called the bomb because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a fuse ready to go off. Right. And so it's actually used as a, as it's, you know, the reason the plants have it is as defense against herbivores and other pests. Right. Right. Like it's we not like supposed it. Supposed to 
<laughs> but, I love it. But, I think it's amazing. But, but it, you know, in general, um, not all bugs, not animals are going to like that flavor. And, and, right. and also with like, you know, broccoli and stuff, we've kind of selectively bred the worst of it out of there. But still, they all have that. And yeah, yeah so it's this really interesting thing where the plant has evolved and all, all brassicales have this mechanism to, pr- to protect them from pests by wow yeah, having a mustard wow. oil bomb and it's called mustard oil because the, the mustard's in the same family and it's uh the chemical that makes mustard spicy is the same isothiocyanate right. so yeah right 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 i can totally like you can taste the difference between a mustard spice and like a pepper spice yes and yeah but i didn't and i guess the pep so the pepper thing is not like uh in the moment Suddenly, there's spice. Right, it's, it exists that's a as spicy. Thing. That's the other whole other thing. Which uh, capsaicin is only spicy to mammals. So birds, it's not spicy to them. So because capsaicin wants birds to spread the seeds and not mammals. So wow, yeah. So that's like these different mechanisms that the plants develop. They're like their like chemical right. system to do what they want is really fascinating. They're very. I mean, I this is not related to nasturtiums, but just plants in general. Just they're so smart and intelligent. Mm-hmm. They have so much information all the time and they start like this. And then like I planted literally random acorn squash that from a store bought acorn squash. And then I had like a gajillion acorn squash mm-hmm. like a few months later. And I'm like, that all just like, it just is all there. That's yeah. And you don't even, it just, I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. Besides to just be like, it's nuts. Yeah, there. I mean, there is, uh, we talk about that on the show a decent amount too, about like this idea of like, what does intelligence mean? And what does mm-hmm. a plant know? Like, can a mm-hmm. plant know something? And, you know, I think, I think probably they can, but it's very different from how we know things, right? And so in this yeah. case, you have this thing where this plant has developed this mechanism that is like, you know, release on action because a plant can't run away from an herbivore. But now it's 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 developed this thing where when it gets bitten, it releases this thing, mm-hmm. and that leads me to maybe my final fun fact and dazzling detail is I ran across this term when I was reading about this called a coevolutionary arms race, mm. and there is a class of moths that have their own enzyme that deactivates the <laughs> isothiocyanate, so they have evolved to combat. The, wow! So, like the the two um, species are are like going back and forth, evolving new weapons against each other. Uh, because <laughs> so yeah, the, so it's a if really you, slow fight. Yeah. It's so when you really see like sl- <laughs> m- like I have had moths eat my brassicas before. That's a moth that has been able to like fight that. Um, Interesting. Yeah. That's fascinating. And it's is it a certain type of moth or is it Yeah, all... I think there's a few I, I didn't get into the details of that. I think there's a handful in maybe this similar genus or so that have developed that ability. I think there's a few more like that. Um Wow. Yeah. So and and the humans have done that too. We just we just evolved to like it, right? So, right. <laughs> we enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just remembering my little friend just in her little hands, just suddenly all the bl- blossoms would be gone. <laughs> <laughs> She loved them. And wait, are their leaves also spicy? Like, so yeah. are they spicy everywhere? Okay. I think their spi- leaves I are spicier, I think. Whoa. Yeah, I think the leaves are spicier. Oh, very cool. I forgot one last fact. Okay. So, as far as like what's in the leaves and the flowers, they do have a lot of uh, vitamin C, actually. Oh, they also, I actually remember reading about that. They also yeah. have a lot of antioxidants and, and some antibacterial properties as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the apparently they are the at least the cultivated plant or the commonly known plant that has the highest concentration of lutein, mm, which lutein yes. is really good for your eyes. And the flowers have the highest lutein of like any, like I saw like a list, like by far it's like four times higher than the next highest one. But even the leaves have really high compared to almost other plants. Have lutein. Wow. So if you, that's really for your eyesight, eat nasturtiums, eat nasturtiums, not carrot. Well, carrots I'm sure are good too, but that's the, they have some lutein in them as well. Um, yeah, but I talk about that on the carrot episode. How that's like that's a, that's a, a <laughs> I have to listen. Yeah, to it's, that. it's a myth that's related to World War II. Give it a listen. <laughs> okay, yeah. my mouth was just hanging open. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's fascinating the way that they're all. It, are is there besides the name nasturtium? Is there are they tied up in any sort of wild history? You know what? I I didn't find much about that and i think that happens a lot with plants that are 
from uh you know this hemisphere because a lot mm-hmm. of that you know they get they get taken to Europe and kind of just co-opted into like European culture and a lot of often that like culture heritage is not as easy to to like grasp on yeah and so yeah. I, I you know it was a little bit hard to research more details about them beyond just how they've been treated in like horticulture mm-hmm. um yeah like I was, and they're not yeah. like a big 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 food item like corn or something right. like that right. so it's not a whole like a whole lot happened but but yeah they see it i like the idea that plants are sort of um punctuating our human history in a way that um just gives it that much more meaning another character if you will i think that was a great way to end the show (laughs) party nails if you had to pick one of your songs that most encompasses a nasturtium (laughs) what would it be i i thought of it instantly so this must be the right answer um my song clothes is about wanting to just devour everything about someone like that i want to be your ghost baby i want to haunt your dreams i want to be the most baby i want to bust your seams like i want to i just want to know every little thing about you um and i you know it's structured like a love song but it's funny and it's silly and it's but it's like still sweet um and a little bit and a little bit sassy, I guess. <laughs> so that's the one that I think is the most similar to a Nister Because <laughs> you give me something. just heard the track Clothes by Party Nails from the album Past Lives and Paychecks. And coming up next on this non-stop rock block is the new hit single from Mustard Oil Bomb, Nose Twister. 
Okay, maybe I took pretending to be a DJ too far there. <laughs> but regardless, that was a really fun episode talking with Party Nails about nasturtium. And I think that wraps it up for today. Thank you for listening. DJ Steve, signing out. My guest on this episode of Rootbound was Party Nails. Party Nails is Alana Carroll, a musician based in Los Angeles, originally from upstate New York. You can learn more at her website, partypartynails.com. Don't forget the second party. Go and listen to her awesome music. If you like Rootbound and you want to help support the show, visit rootboundpodcast.com slash support to find all the ways you can support the show, including leaving a rating or review on your podcast listening platform of choice. You can probably just scroll down on your phone right now and do that. I would be so appreciative. Rootbound is hosted by founding member of Mustard Oil Bomb, Steve Ellington. Music by Christian Kriegeskota. Fake ads by David Lani. Rootbound. It's a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. But if you can go outside, look for some nasturtiums and take a bite. It really is amazing to eat a flower. Wood sorrel. Oh, it really is quite tart. <laughs>